Pictured here are a population of alligators at Lake Griffin, Florida, who were described as mindless shells incapable of controlling their own bodies. This strange phenomenon was first documented in the late 1990s, when the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission were conducting alligator surveys at the lake. It was during these surveys that they found several mature and sub-adult American alligators belly up in the water. One fisherman of Lake Griffin stated that there would be times where people could go out onto the lake and find 10 dead alligators in half a mile. The most interesting detail was not only were the number of dead alligators alarming, their carcasses showed no immediate signs for cause of death. At this stage in an alligator's life, little is going to be able to kill them besides another alligator or humans. Therefore, as no physical injuries were present on these alligators, it was evident to many that a serious ecological problem was to blame. In addition to these dead alligators, the ones that were found alive in the lake were not showing normal behaviors. Some live Lake Griffin alligators were observed to be lethargic and unresponsive to approach by humans, as they were showing symptoms like uncoordinated movements, apathy, and problems when diving. Often, the only sign that these alligators were alive was based on sporadic twitching. Not only was this mysterious problem affecting the current population, it was also affecting the unborn. While Lake Griffin historically was not known for high hatch rates, as only 50% of eggs would hatch, these newer clutches were below 10%, with one source saying only 4% of the eggs hatched and most embryos died during the first 5 days of incubation. From the years of 1998 to 2002, a total of 423 alligators were found dead in the lake. With no other predators in the lake being affected, a serious investigation was started to answer the question of why alligators in particular were falling victim to this deadly phenomenon. When you're trying to research crocodilians, sometimes getting the support to study them can be a challenge. But luckily, there are people out there that want to help. And that's why I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Fishing Clash. Fishing Clash is an engaging mobile game that lets you experience fishing in real life fisheries. The game lets you have the opportunity to catch several species of unique fish, and I think the diversity of species in the game is one of the best highlights. As someone who uses a rod and reel to catch nuisance alligators for work, but is often too busy to go out for casual fishing, Fishing Clash has given me the opportunity to fish at the comfort of my own home. From lush lagoons to icy fjords, I'm able to appreciate these cool locations right at my couch. After playing it for some time, I can honestly say it's a fun game and a nice way for me to wind down while still doing something animal related. You can download the game using my link in the description or scan the QR code displayed on the screen. Use my special gift code, Jake456, to claim a $20 value reward, including a unique avatar for free. Again, thank you Fishing Class for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. You can help support the channel too by downloading the game using my gift code, Jake456, after downloading. When starting their investigations, surveys were done to count the dead alligators, and the dead bodies were sprayed with spray paint to show they had been counted. Alligators that were showing the zombie-like behaviors were also caught and examined. The alligators that were already dead or humanely euthanized were sent to necropsy work. However, initial tests of several organs did not give any indication as to why the alligators were dying. Blood was also collected and tested against various viruses and bacteria. Not only was there no difference in the blood from healthy and the sick alligators, the blood killed all the foreign bodies. Considering all crocodilians have very efficient immune systems given the serious injuries they can get in the very dirty environments they live in, this isn't too surprising. However, this just added more confusion as to what was going on with these Lake Griffin alligators. Electromyography was used for some of the sick alligators, and electrodes were placed near major nerves. While a normal alligator would respond quickly by twitching the affected nerve or muscle almost instantly, the zombie alligators had much slower response times and their responses were far more unpredictable. Although this did not identify what exactly was causing this, it did pinpoint that this was a neurological issue. The brain was then looked into and pathologists found several areas of lighter pink in the tissues. Specifically, they found the neurons were dying or dead in the affected alligators of Lake Griffin. This here was the reason why the alligators were having uncoordinated movements and lethargy while alive. As the investigation continued, the water quality decreased during this time, and fishermen described the fishing as not as good as previous years. The St. John's Water Management District was put in charge of looking into the water problems and found some serious issues. It was discovered the lake contained unusually high concentrations of cyanobacteria. When these tiny blue-green algae die, they release a cocktail of chemical toxins, toxins that are well known for attacking the central nervous system. They can cause weakness, paralysis, brain damage, and even death. 
The reason for the increase in the cyanobacteria was tied to agricultural runoff and pesticides increasing the density of nutrients in the lake, which made the environment more suitable for the cyanobacteria. Although a potential culprit was identified for the zombie alligators, when looking back at the alligators in Lake Griffin, there seemed to be no indication that they had dangerous quantities of the cyanobacteria in their systems. However, a new suspect and reason for what was happening would soon be discovered. Through research originally done with salmon who were showing similar issues to the Lake Griffin alligators, it was discovered that when the fish were lacking thiamine or vitamin B1, they lost their equilibrium and sank to the bottom of the water. Also, Holes found in the salmon's brains matched what was seen in the alligators. In addition, alligators that were showing the worst signs of illness had the lowest levels of thiamine when compared to alligators that were healthy. What helped prove this theory even more was when researchers found out a type of fish the Lake Griffin alligators were eating. Gizzard shad, a fish found in many of the Lake Griffin alligator stomachs, is very high in thiaminase, an enzyme that targets and destroys thiamine. To further test this, an experimental group of captive alligators were fed exclusively gizzard chat to see its effects. It was discovered that this test group was showing symptoms similar to the Lake Griffin alligators as they were very lethargic. While the Lake Griffin alligators were not eating gizzard chat exclusively, it was noticed that at the same time the alligators were dying and being ill, the diversity of fish beyond gizzard chat was very low. This meant that alligators were not eating other prey sources that could properly counteract the high thiaminase in their bodies from the shad. The reason for the shad populations exploding around this time was due to the highly nutrient conditions of Lake Griffin, the same conditions that helped increase the cyanobacteria in the water. With this discovery, a major effort to clean up the lake was in effect. In early spring of 2002, commercial fishermen removed more than 500,000 kilograms of gizzard shad and garfish from Lake Griffin. It was after this massive restoration project that the number of alligators dying in the lake drastically decreased. It was also known that alligators around this time were also shifting at catfish as a main prey item in the lake. It was after this time that alligator mortality started to decrease to typical levels seen in other areas. The number of alligators with signs of illness also started to decline in this period too. Although many have tied the gizzard shad to the creation of these zombie alligators and their removal being the cure. There has been some dissent to this theory. One paper released in 2007 stated, several factors in and around Lake Griffin occurred in 2002 that could have affected the decrease in algae mortality. Water levels rose sharply in early 2002 after heavy winter rains in 2001. The marsh flowway restoration system was reactivated. Large quantities of shad and gar were removed and water quality improved as indicated by reduced chlorophyll levels. Whether algae mortality was linked to these events is uncertain. However, a significant change in the species composition in algae diets coincided with these events. No matter the exact cause of this strange incident, it is evident that a major ecological problem was successfully corrected. However, let us hope that another incident does not happen that will allow a return to these zombie reptilians. Again, thank you to our sponsor Fishing Clash for supporting the channel. Please check out the link in the description or comments to download their game and remember to use my code to get your reward. So many of you know about the current study I am working on about 20 foot plus crocodilians. Heck, the topic is pretty much the main thing I'm known for on here, but I need your help. I am finding some really interesting information pertaining to certain head measurements for at least a saltwater crocodile. However, I am currently working with a small sample size. What I am looking for are detailed measurements from skulls or heads of saltwater crocodiles that came from animals at least 10 feet or 3 meters long. I will have my email and Instagram in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you all for watching. Wow, that's a great